Now, Father, we thank you for your word and for the Holy Spirit that shall reveal the word to the hearts of the people. We ask you to rise and live big within every person under the sound of our voice, that your word shall come alive and strengthen and guide and bring healing and life and health, and that your word shall be a light unto their path and a lamp unto their feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I want you to turn, first of all, to Proverbs, the 20th chapter. I want to share with you this morning on the subject of the human spirit. Some things about, actually, the Bible calls it the heart. And uh, different places, it talks about the spirit of man or the human spirit. And there's some truths here that would be very important to us, or they are very important to us in this life, because... So many times people have just read over these scriptures and said, well, I wonder what it means. But if you study the Bible or just read the Bible just for be reading and not any specific direction to it, then you may miss some of these truths. But when you take a subject like this and just really get into it and study out what it's saying, then there's some things that will come out of it that will bring some supernatural insight to you. Let's read from Proverbs 20, verse 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward part of his belly. Now, if you'll notice here that the writer says, the spirit of man, which is the human spirit, is the candle. Now, you know, that doesn't mean a whole lot to us today because we don't use candles like they did in those days. The word candle here, there's a little footnote by it, and the center column reference says, the lamp of the Lord. So the spirit of man is the candle or the light bulb, we would say today, that's the way we'd say it. We'd say it's the light bulb that God uses to enlighten us, or the light that God uses to enlighten us. See, to be led by the spirit of God means to hear from God's spirit into your human spirit. We walk by faith and not by sight, the Word tells us. That's the way we should walk. We don't go by just what we see or just what we hear or feel or so on. We go by what we believe and what we get in our spirits. To be led by the Spirit of God is to be led by the human spirit because it is the Holy Spirit that bears witness with the human spirit. Now, the Apostle Paul said it this way, He says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, he didn't say as many as are led by their feelings or by their sight, but as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. So there is a relationship between your human spirit and God's spirit. And I want us to see that from the Scriptures because it's very important that we understand it, because this is where God directs us, is in the human spirit. Many times people are led by their spirit to do certain things. Now, you can be led by your spirit because of words you say. See, if you're speaking the word of God, then the human spirit will receive God's word and will guide you according to God's word. But if you're speaking the words of the enemy... You're saying what the enemy said, saying what the devil said, always quoting what you feel or what you think. Then you can deceive your own heart or your spirit into leading you astray because you program your spirit with either the word of God or your words or the words of the enemy. Now, the Lord gave me this illustration. I think it's about as good as I've ever heard. The human spirit is like a film in a camera. It will produce whatever it's exposed to. It'll bring forth the image of whatever it is exposed to. So with a camera, you wouldn't expose it to something that you didn't want manifest, would you? I mean, it'd be foolish to say, well, you know, I'm going to get a picture of all these beautiful people here in El Paso and uh, then just take the camera over here in the corner and take a picture of the usher seats over there that are empty then just bawl and squall and wonder why I didn't get a picture of all these beautiful congregation. Well, you expose the film to the wrong thing. Now, God's Word is designed to bring life and direction to our spirits. 
Now here the writer says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Now when the word belly is used in the scripture, I think you'll find if you do a study on it, that it is referring to the heart. What the Bible calls in the New Testament the heart of man. Now you find that Jesus talked some about this as he said in John the 7th chapter, he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then it says, this he spake of the Holy Spirit, which was not yet given. So out of your belly are your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Now we know that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, dwells in the human spirit. The Holy Spirit does not dwell in the physical body. You hear this said once in a while, well, I know the Spirit's here because of feeling. Well, I know the Spirit's here because the Word says He's here. said He abides within you. I know I was saying this one time to the Lord. I was in a motel room praying, and I was getting ready to go out and speak to a convention. And I said, now, Lord, I just don't feel the anointing like I have in days past. Lord, what's wrong? I just don't feel the anointing. He said, well, what did I say to you about my anointing? What did my word say about it? I said, well, you said the anointing abides within me. He said, well, get on out there. If you're there, it's there. So I just went on. You know? <laughs> See, we get geared sometimes to where we want to feel everything. And the feeling's not wrong, but it's wrong when you put feelings above the word of God. See? It's good to feel that anointing. But you see, the Holy Spirit dwells in the human spirit. He does not dwell in the physical flesh of your body. He dwells in the human spirit. Now, he'll affect the flesh. But he dwells in the human spirit. See, see, I'm in this building this morning. But I'm not a two before, or I'm not a piece of glass, or I'm not a piece of steel. But I'm in this building. I'm housed in this building. So the Holy Spirit, see, is housed in the human spirit. That's where he abides. But he's not a part of the physical body. Now... When he says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of his belly, he says that the human spirit is the light bulb or the light that God uses to enlighten you. So it is the human spirit that he's referring to here and not the Holy Spirit, but yet the Holy Spirit does abide in the human spirit. And he reveals the things of God. Now, to really get into that, we're going to have to go to... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now listen to what the Apostle Paul says. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of the wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. For I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak the wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the prince of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now I want you to listen to what the Apostle Paul is saying. He said, I didn't speak to you in man's wisdom, but in the wisdom of God that came by the Spirit of God. Now, it came by the Spirit of God into his human spirit. He's talking about revelation knowledge. He's talking about revelation wisdom that comes from God directly into the human spirit. In the book of Galatians, Paul says that I didn't learn this of man, didn't get it by studying in books, but he said I got it by revelation. It came by revelation. In other words, it came by God's spirit into the human spirit to reveal direction and wisdom of God concerning the mysteries of God. And it is when we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to the human spirit the wisdom of God, the direction of God, and to teach us all things and guide us into all truths, that's when we receive the revelation knowledge of God's holy word. 
Now, if we give more study and more meditation to the Word of God, we will get more understanding and more revelation from it by the Spirit of God. For, see, Jesus said before he left, he said, I have many things to say unto you, talking to the disciples, but he said, you cannot bear them now. How be it, he says, when the Spirit of truth has come, he will teach you all things and guide you into all truths, and he will show you things to come. Well, how many of you would like to be guided into all truths? How many of you would like to know things to come? Well, you can know by the Spirit of God through the human spirit coming by revelation of the Spirit of God. Can you say amen? amen? Now, I want us to notice here, we're in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, as we're talking about the human spirit and how God guides us by the Spirit of God through our spirit. For God's Spirit does bear witness with our spirit that we're the sons of God that the Apostle Paul goes on here in verse 9 and says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now, I know all of you have heard that verse quoted, and most of you have heard it quoted just like that. Well, you know what the Bible says. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for them that love him. So you just never know what God's going to do. Well, you will if you read the next verse. <laughs> See, we stop reading too quick sometimes. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. Now, see, this is what the Apostle Paul is saying. He said, all of these things that I spoke to you was not the wisdom of man, but it was the wisdom of God that came from the mystery of God revealed unto me, not by the wisdom of the world, but by the hidden wisdom that was before ordained. You see, that the prince of this world wouldn't know it, but it'd be revealed to us. Then he tells you in verse 9 the key to understanding how this revelation comes to us. I hath not seen it. Now he's talking about these things. I hasn't seen it. Ear hath not heard it. Neither hath it entered into the heart of man. In other words, it hasn't entered in by the eye gate, the ear gate, the five senses realm. Do you understand what he's saying? It hadn't entered in that way, by the normal way. You see, the way that you learn and the way we teach our children, we send them to school and they learn from books and by experience and different things. But Paul said this wisdom did not come this way. It didn't come by what was seen or what was heard. Neither did it enter into the heart of man by the natural five senses realm. But he goes on to say, but God hath revealed them to us by his Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit revealed it. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, how many of you have a Bible there that says, For the Spirit searcheth, where it says Spirit is capitalized? Now, you see, in the Greek, there's all capital letters. So when they translate it here, they just capitalize what they thought should be. But now let me point something out to you, and this will help you. This word Spirit here, searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God, this is talking about the human spirit. It's not talking about the Holy Spirit. It's talking about the human spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now ask yourself this. Why would the Holy Spirit have to search the things of God? The Holy Spirit knows the things of God. He's the third person of the Godhead. He is equal with God the Father and the Son. Why would he search the things of God? He has no need to search the things of God. It is the human spirit that has need to search the things of God. Now, this will tell you why that in the earth today, there are people searching for peace and for wisdom and for guidance and trying to find themselves in drugs and alcohol and all kinds of spiritualism that is of the devil because their spirit is searching for the supernatural. And what it's doing, it's wanting to search for the things of God and they've been misdirected. You see, they'll never be truly happy until they really search the things of God, the real supernatural. Now notice here, he says, For the Spirit searcheth all things, ye the deep things of God, 
For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Now notice he's referring to the human spirit here. What man knoweth all about man? In other words, uh, I don't know all about me. Sometimes I wonder why I do some things that I do. Sometimes I am led to do some things that I don't know why I did it. I just know that I was led to do it. And sometimes I'm glad I was led to do it because I found out my spirit knew more about it than I did. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know why I did it. I didn't even know to do it, except I was led by inward witness by my spirit to do this certain thing. Sometimes it's just small things. And you see, this is the way you learn in the small things. I know not long ago I was uh, working on a road there in Arkansas. We was building, driving a bulldozer and doing some things, and I got out of my pickup, and my spirit said to me, see, your spirit will communicate with you, said to me, you ought to take this certain, what it was, chain or something with you. And I, and I thought, no need to take that. Why well, I don't want to drag that thing around with me. You know? So I didn't take it. And just a little bit, I had to walk back up there and get it. See, my spirit knew more than I did. I rationalized on it. No, no need for that. And then, not long after that, I started to get out of the pickup one day, and my spirit said, take the chainsaw with you. I don't want to take no chainsaw with me. I don't want to do the chainsaw. And I got off way down the bottom of the mountain and got that dozer <laughs> hung on a tree root down there and was going to have to cut the tree to get it loose. I had to walk back up the mountain and get the chainsaw. I finally figured out <laughs> that God's trying to tell me something here. <laughs> God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. But when you won't listen to the Spirit, your human spirit, see? See, this is how you train the human spirit, to hear from God. Now, it's a lot easier to learn about chainsaws and chains and different things like that than it is for God to tell you something that's going to cost you your life and you didn't obey it. And you see that God will do that by His Spirit, through your Spirit. He'll reveal to you things you should do, you shouldn't do, and you'll be led by your Spirit to do it if your Spirit is filled with the Word of God. See, the life of God is in the Word of God, and it gets in the human spirit. Jesus said, the things I speak unto you, they're Spirit, they're life. There's life in God's Word, and the Word of God is what the human spirit thrives on and causes it to enlighten you. The Spirit is the lamp that God uses, but God's Word is what lights the human spirit. You see, you go along confessing, well, dear God, nothing I ever do works out. I never do have anything that I need, and you'll get out of the truck, and your spirit will say, now, don't take that with you, you know, and you just go on, and then you have to come back and get it. Why? Because you programmed yourself wrong by saying, well, I just never do take what I need or so on. See, I was sitting there listening to my spirit. I heard my spirit say that to me. You know, you said this. How many of you have ever said this? Well, you know, something said to me. Well, what was that something? Is your spirit trying to tell you something? Something said to me, I ought to do this. But I argued with it and I just, didn't, just couldn't figure out why I should do it. Did anybody ever have that happen to them besides me? <laughs> Well, God's trying to show us something here. Now listen to what the Apostle Paul said. What man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Now, I don't know all about me. I don't know all about what happens in me sometimes. I think one of the finest examples of this I've heard uh, Dr. Roy Hicks was over in Africa ministering. And uh, it was hot there and they were ministering in these open air meetings and he was losing a lot of salt through uh, perspiration and his clothes just saturated every time he ministered. And in a couple of days, he got to where he could not stand up. He'd have to hold to the pulpit, stand up. He'd get up there to it, but he'd have to hold on to it, keep him falling over. He's dizzy. And he'd have to lean up against something. He said he was leaning up against the wall, getting ready to speak one day. And he just said, now, I know that in me, my spirit knows all about me. So he said, I just call on the Spirit of God to reveal in my spirit to me what's wrong with me. What's going on here? See, the spirit of man knows all about man. See, to come forth. 
And he said, it just rolls right up in him, said, you've been losing a lot of your salt from your body. And said, the next time you eat a meal, just cover your food with salt. And so he went ahead and held to the podium and preached that morning. And when they went to lunch, he said, pass the salt, please. <laughs> and he just covered his food with salt, said he never had another problem with being dizzy. Now, I see, that came by his spirit, came right out of him. See, the spirit of man knows all about man. And then he says the spirit of God knows all about God. Now, you get those two spirits together, then you've tapped the source of all knowledge. Do you see any benefit to tapping the source of all knowledge? <laughs> see, Jesus has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, the Apostle Paul said. But we have to learn how to receive the direction of God by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of man, the human spirit, is the light that God uses to enlighten you. This is the way God's going to give you direction in life. It may not come as a flash of light or a bolt of lightning. It may just come by impression in your spirit. So we need to learn how to hear the voice of our spirit. Can you say amen? All right. We're here in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. We're talking about the human spirit. Now let's read from verse 9 and down through here because I want to set this, I want to get this engrafted into your thinking. Because you that are in business, uh, the decisions you need to make. They'll come by the Spirit of God if you'll allow yourself to be trained to hear the voice of the Spirit and allow these things to come forth within you. Now notice in verse 9 it says, As it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him, but God has revealed them to us by his Spirit. In other words, he said this is the way God revealed it. He revealed it by his spirit to the human spirit. For the spirit, that is the human spirit, searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? In other words, the spirit of man knows all about him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now I made a statement. And I want to show you that it's qualified right here. That in verse 10, where it says, For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God, it does not mean Holy Spirit, it means the human spirit. Now, this verse, 11, will qualify it, where it says, Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. In other words, he says the Spirit of God knows all about God then that proves that the Holy Spirit would not have to search the deep things of God. He already knows them. Can you see that? Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world. I'm glad I didn't receive the Spirit of the world, aren't you? But we have received the Spirit which is of God. Now, what's the Apostle Paul referring to here? He's referring again to the human spirit. We have not received the human spirit from the world. Now, he's also, by law of double reference, he's talking about the spirit, the renewed spirit within us, the born-again human spirit. Now, let, let me just stop here long enough to show you something or, or bring to remembrance some things that will help in Genesis, the first chapter, it says, God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth. God created man in his own image and in his own likeness. When I say man, I'm talking about mankind. God is a spirit. They that worship him, Jesus said, They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit. Now, when he created man in his image and in his likeness, what he did, he created man an exact duplication of God's kind. Now, let me qualify that, because sometimes people say, oh, well, you're getting too far out. You're saying we're gods. No, no. We're created in the likeness of God in his image and his likeness. The word likeness in the original Hebrew meant an exact duplication of kind. Now, what kind is God? God is a spirit. 
And man was created in the image and likeness of God. Now, you can see it if you open your Bibles there to Genesis, the second chapter, verse 7. It says, The Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Now, that is not the creation of man. He formed man out of something that already existed. That's not a creation. You see, he had already created the earth. So he took the earth, which he's already created, and he forms man's body. Now, that's not the creation. He made his body out of the dust of the ground. And then it says he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Or the Amplified says he breathed into his nostrils the spirit of life. Now, if God breathed spirit life into Adam, what kind of spirit was it? The Spirit of God, wasn't it? Now, there's the creation of man right there. That is the creation of man. You see, the real man is the human spirit. Now, this is what Paul is referring to here when he says, Now, we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. God breathed His own Spirit into man. And man became an exact duplication of God's kind. It was the same Spirit that God was that was in man. The human spirit was a part of God that he breathed into it. Now, the word spirit is breath or wind, air. It was the very breath and life of God that he breathed into Adam. And Adam was an exact duplication of God's kind. He was capable of operating in faith like God did. He was capable of subduing the earth and having dominion over it. Every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. And you know, that's good news. Just know you have dominion over creeps, isn't it? (laughs) Glory be to God. Everything that creepeth. Now, God gave Adam dominion over the earth. He was capable of subduing the earth or God wouldn't have told him to do it if he hadn't have been capable of doing it. Now, he was going to do it the same way God did it is by speaking words of faith. But now, back to verse 12. Paul says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now, he tells you why he created you in his image and in his likeness, so you would know the things that were given to us of God. Now, get this. This is important, and it's all here in these verses we've read. But the Spirit which is of God, we have the Spirit which is of God. Why? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. This is the only way we'll know the things that are of God, is by the Spirit. Can you see that? He created in man, breathed into mankind, a spirit. It was the Spirit of God, so that God's Spirit could bear witness with the human spirit. You see, spirits communicate with spirits. Spirits don't communicate with bodies. They communicate with spirits. So God's Spirit then could bear witness with man's spirit and do exactly what the Apostle Paul said. Eye hasn't seen, ear has not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man by the natural realm, by studying books and all of this. But he said, God has revealed it by His Spirit. Isn't it good that we have insight by the Spirit of God? God reveals things. Now, the Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That just simply means it's the light that God is going to use to enlighten your pathway. It's the light that God is going to use to cause it to be a lamp unto your feet or a light unto your feet and a light upon your path. When you don't know what to do, when you don't know which way to turn, you don't know what decision to make, don't go around saying, Dear God, I don't know what to do. I'll always make the wrong decision. Every time I get under pressure, I'll always make the wrong decision. You're planting seeds. You know what you're doing? You're binding that wisdom of God that can come through the human spirit. You know what Jesus said? See, we talked about it a while ago. Jesus said, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. Now, he's talking to the disciples. Now, the reason they couldn't bear them because he could speak it, but they couldn't understand it. 
Now, you know why they couldn't understand it? Because they were yet carnal. They had not been born again. See, it is the rebirth of the human spirit that causes the human spirit to come alive to the things, the power charges put back in the human spirit. And the human spirit begins to receive communication from God's spirit. So Jesus said, I've got a lot of things I'd like to tell you, but you can't bear them now. And that was very obvious they couldn't because he'd been telling them all the time, said, I've got to go to the cross and die and be abused and spit on and crucified. And then they was over there arguing about, well, who's going to be the greatest when you set up your kingdom here in Jerusalem? One of them won't sit on his right hand, the other on his left. And he kept telling them he's going to have to die and be gone. And finally, Peter rebuked him over. <laughs> and Jesus finally turned around and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Now, here's a man, Peter, that was sincere, all right, but you see, he was walking in the carnal nature. And Jesus was giving him great truths, but he couldn't receive it. You know why? Because his spirit didn't have the Holy Spirit in it, the teacher and the guide. And they said, I got a lot of things to tell you, but he said, You can't receive them now. How be it when the Spirit of truth has come? He will teach you all things and guide you into all truths. Now, he said, I can get them to you a lot easier when I'm gone and reveal them into your spirit than I can stand here and tell you now and you'll go away and never know what I said. And he did many times, told them exactly what was going to happen, and they didn't believe a word of it. Went in one ear and out the other, he said. Well, God wants us to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, and he is telling us how to receive of the Spirit of God. I have good news for you. God reveals things to the human spirit. And when you learn and train the human spirit to hear the voice of the Spirit of God, then God will direct you and you will no longer have to walk in darkness in making decisions. Isn't that good news? Praise God. All right. The Apostle Paul has laid it out very plainly here. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 12 that we've received the Spirit which is of God, that we might receive the things which are freely given to us of God. Now, let me go back again to Genesis, because this is one of the keys to understanding the Bible, is understanding what happened in the first three chapters of Genesis. God had created him a man, and created humanity, and put him here on earth. Adam and Eve, and here they are, they're hearing from God, they walked and talked with God in the cool of the day. Spirit communicated with their spirit, see. Now, Adam sinned, and he broke that fellowship with God. God told him, the day that you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of blessing and calamity, in dying you shall die. In other words, he died instantly spiritually, and he started dying physically then. Now, the thing that we need to realize is that when we talk about spiritual death, we're not talking about spirit ceasing to exist. See, when you talk about somebody's spirit being dead, people say, well, it doesn't exist. Oh, yeah, the spirit of man always exists. But let's put it over in the natural. See, Jesus always did this. He never did separate the natural from the spiritual totally. He always brought the two together to teach great truths. Now, if someone had a radio in here and someone came with a tape recorder and they're going to record the service, you know, and they said, well, my battery is dead. So they get over here and they find the battery in this radio and take it out and put it in that tape recorder. Somebody come along, pick that radio up, and they turn the thing on and they slap it around a little bit. They can't even get a sound out of it. And they say, well, this thing's dead. It didn't cease to exist, did it? It's still there. Well, you don't bury it just because it's dead, do you? What do you do? Well, you take it and see what's wrong with it. You take it to the fellow who works on it, and he opens it up. He said, well, the only problem is it don't have any batteries in it. Everything's still working order. Everything's just good as news. They just don't have any power charge in it. And that's what happened to Adam. When he sinned, he lost the power charge of the Holy Spirit out of the human spirit. See? And he became spiritually dead. God had to deal with him on a physical level had to teach him how to clothe and to feed himself. When he was in the garden there, he had everything needed, but God had to teach him these things. Now, he lost the Holy Spirit when he sinned. His human spirit went dead on him. It was not communicating and receiving like it should from God. Now, see, that radio 
everything about it's all right. And all of the radio stations, all kinds of voices going through this air here this morning. And if you've got a receiver and tune it in, you can pick them up. Most of them you wouldn't want to hear, but you can pick them up. Same way with God. God is always speaking to us, but if we don't have the power charge in the receiver, you're not going to get anything. It's the human spirit that God uses to enlighten you. Now, that's the reception center of all that God gives. See, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So anything that God gives us must come and be received into the human spirit first. Now, you need to see this because this is why many people never been able to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost because they're looking to receive some kind of feeling or something. See, it must be received into the Spirit first. You believe you receive, then you act like it. Well, I didn't feel anything. Well, it didn't say anything about feeling anything. He said, he that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth, to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, that's positive, isn't it? And I said, yeah, but I didn't feel anything. Well, the feelings may come later. But you see, you receive the Holy Spirit into the human spirit. Then it'll manifest himself. He'll manifest himself. Same way with divine healing. That's why a lot of people cannot understand divine healing. They say, well, I'll believe it when I feel it. Somebody said, well, I believe it if I could see it. Well, some of those same people see it and say, I see it and don't believe it. <laughs> Seeing's not believing, but believing is seeing. Are you listening? You can see some things in your spirit and believe it that you can't see. So even physical healing, divine healing, comes through the human spirit first, must be received into the human spirit, then it's manifest in the physical body. That's the reason that times that people, you know, be prayed for and they go away feeling to see if they still hurt. Some people, if they don't get a manifestation the first five seconds, they didn't get it. That's why God has to do some things quickly sometimes because some people can't believe God but five seconds without getting a manifestation. If they don't get the manifestation five seconds while they didn't get it, but you see, we have to take some things by faith sometimes. I had a man come in the prayer line one time, ministered to him by the laying on of hands. He had a chronic back problem for 20 years. And he told me this before he left the church. He said, you know, from the time you laid hands on me, he said, I hurt worse for 20 minutes. And because he had said under the teaching of how to resist the devil, he said, I said, no, in the name of Jesus, thank God I believe I've received my healing. Well, he believed he received something he didn't feel. He didn't feel healed. But he said, the word says they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. He laid his hands on me. And thank God I believe I recover. But he hurt worse. Now, you see, he's going by what his spirit tells him and not what his physical senses tell him. Now, before the service was over, which was 30, 40 minutes later, then the pain totally left. He was totally healed. I talked to him three months later, said never had another problem with that back problem. 20 years, chronic back problem. See, we've received the Spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. He received that healing into His Spirit first. And then it manifests itself in His physical body. See, that's actually the way that the miraculous conception took place. God sent an angel with God's Word. The angel came and appeared to Mary and said, Thou shalt conceive and bear a child. She said, How? Seeing I know not a man. And he told her, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. She said, be it unto me according to thy word. What did she do? She received the word of God. She didn't go by feeling. She didn't go by sight. She went by the word of God. Be it unto me according to the word. She received the word into the human spirit. And it manifested itself in her physical body. The embryo that was in Mary's womb was nothing more than God's word. It was the word of God. And it took flesh upon itself. It was an act of the God kind of faith. So divine healing, salvation comes the same way. You've got to receive God's word concerning salvation into the human spirit first. If you don't receive the word into your spirit, you won't act on it. That's where the action comes from, from the heart of the spirit of man. 
So this is why that we have received the Spirit, which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now notice the Apostle Paul goes on here in verse 13, says, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now you see, what we need to realize is the fact that the Apostle Paul is giving us insight that the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. Now, Adam, with the power charge, which was the Holy Spirit gone out of the human spirit, he couldn't receive the things of the Spirit of God because they were foolishness to him. Now, Adam was a spirit-led man until he sinned. And then the power charge left his spirit, which was the Holy Spirit, and left him to be carnally led by his five physical senses. But thank God the Apostle Paul says, in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, he's talking about all things in the spirit, man, see, have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In other words, he's talking about the rebirth of the human spirit. What happened is when man is born again, the power charge of the Holy Spirit is inserted back into the human spirit. Now, that didn't mean he got baptized in the Holy Ghost. That meant that a measure of the Holy Spirit was put back into the human spirit, recreated the human spirit, and he became alive toward God. And then God was able to minister to him. God's spirit could bear witness with his spirit that he was a child of God. Now, the reason that a lost person feels lost is because that power charge is gone. There's an emptiness there. There is no witness of God's spirit. There is a witness of the spirit of the enemy that those two spirits are communicating together and it brings torment and pain and trouble and problems of life. But God's spirit bears witness with our spirit when we're born again. So the reborn human spirit is put back in the likeness of God as it was in the beginning. Isn't that good news? Praise God forevermore. Now, notice here, as we're in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Verse 14, the Apostle Paul says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now, he's just stated in verse 13 that we have to compare spiritual things with spiritual. The spirit of man deals with spiritual things. So God's spirit beareth witness with our spirit. And Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, their spirit, their life. So God's word reacting in the human spirit produces spiritual power. You compare spiritual things with spiritual. You take spiritual food and feed the spiritual man. The spiritual man is the real you. It's the man on the inside. It's the human spirit. God's word to your human spirit is like physical food to the physical body. If you don't eat, you're going to get weak. If you eat, you can be strong. If you take God's word and put it in the human spirit, then you'll be strong in the spirit. See, it's a spiritual working of God's power. Now, God's word is filled with faith. That's the way you get faith in the human spirit. You take God's word and you speak it. Proverbs says, write these things on the table of your heart. How do you write them on the table of your heart? Well, the psalmist David tapped into it when he said, my tongue is as the pen of a ready writer. You take God's word and you speak it. The apostle Paul said it this way in Romans, the 10th chapter. He said, the righteousness which is of faith says, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. See, it's first in your mouth, and then it gets in your heart. So to fill the human spirit with the life-giving force of God's Word, which is spiritual power, 
and insight and light. This is actually how God lights this candle inside you is with the Word of God. Now, the reason that people walk in darkness because the Bible calls the people that are lost in darkness is because they have no light in them. It is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man, you see, is the candle of the Lord. But a man with his spirit that has no fellowship with God, he doesn't have any light in his candle. His candle's gone out. And he walks in darkness. But thank God it can be lit. God will light your candle. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> Praise God. Well, the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. Neither can he know them. They're spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual... Now, let's look at this. He that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. I've got good news for you. The devil can't read your mind. Because he is not spiritually alive. Now, I know there's some people that think the devil can read your mind. Well, he might know what you're thinking if he put what you're thinking in there. Or he can look at your reaction and tell what you're thinking sometimes. But he said, he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Now, who is he that is spiritual? It's the spirit man. Your physical body doesn't have an ounce of spirituality in it or about it. Somebody said, oh, this old flesh is just sinful. Oh, no, it's just the way you trained it. Hmm? I mean, you can train it to do anything in the world. <laughs> it's a piece of meat. You can train it. Some of you have been training it. Just can't eat without pie. Guess I'll get big as a barn. You probably will. You trained it that way. Turn it around. Train it however you want it. No, the old body's not sinful. It's the way it's been trained. It's the way you train it. It's not evil or good. It's the spirit that's in you. What makes it evil or good? Now, he says, He that is spiritual judgeth all things. Now, the part of you that's spiritual is a spirit man. That's spiritual. Your spirit judges all things. When you don't know why you feel like that you ought to do this, but you're just impressed in your spirit. You just have a knowing that you are, well, I knew I should have done that. There's something said to me. Boy, I'll tell you, if you'll learn to listen to the voice of your spirit, your conscience is the voice of your spirit speaking to you. Your spirit knows some things. For your spirit is the spiritual part of you. Have you ever walked up to somebody and just as soon as you walked up to them, your spirit just drew up in a knot and just said, you don't have a thing to do with that person. Get away from them. And you get under condemnation physically about that. You get to thinking, well, you know, I oughtn't to be this way. But your spirit picked up something that was wrong there. Something bad wrong there. You don't know anything. Physically, you don't know it. In your brain, you don't know why in the world I'm having this kind of thinking. But it came from the inside of you because he that is spiritual judges all things. Your spirit already judged that before you ever got to that fellow. He said, stay away from it. Don't go in business with him. Don't make this deal with him. Stay away from it. Your spirit just drawed up in a knot. And then there's times that a certain situation you came into and it's like somebody said, you just had that velvety feeling down in here. Right in the pit of your stomach, just a velvety feeling, just, just a peace just go over you every time you'd think about it. That's your spirit telling you everything's all right. Everything's all right. Don't ever override the spirit trying to tell you something. Now, I'll tell you, if you get a hold of this, it'll save you thousands of dollars in business deals. Oh, dear God, I wish I'd have got a hold of this years ago. On one deal, it would have saved me $150,000. On one deal. If I'd have just got Brother Hagin's tape, 45-minute tape, just $3 for a tape would have saved me $150,000. <laughs> because I had this feeling, but I didn't know what it was. It was just something just inside me, just like a knot inside the pit of my stomach. For the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of his belly. Your spirit's right here, right where it says the belly. Right there. Somebody said, I had butterflies in my stomach. Where were they? Right down here. That was your spirit you was feeling. Something just scratching in there. 
And then there's times that you just have a knowing that you know, you know, you know what you know, and they can't nobody talk you out of it. Just a peace that surpasseth all understanding. That's that velvety feeling down in here. Your spirit's telling you it's all right. It's all right. That's all right. But when you have that naughty feeling down there, and it's just uneasy in this down there, you stay away from it. You may not understand it. It's foolishness to the natural man. See, your old physical mind will say, oh, that's foolish. That's foolish. I know this is going to go. Oh, I just know this is going to go. Now, if you keep saying that long enough, your spirit will pick up on that, and your mouth will deceive your heart. Then your spirit will lead you right into that deal and you'll have a velvety feeling about it because you spoke something and spoke something and spoke something till it was picked up in your spirit. Now, if you read James, the first chapter, he said, If any man seemeth to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, that man's religion is in vain. In other words, what he believes in vain, if he don't bridle his tongue, his tongue will deceive his heart. Now, the heart is the spirit. The heart is the spirit. Now, this is why that some of you have been led into business deals. You felt led to get in that thing because you had spoken things about it and said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that until that got into your spirit and you were led to do it. Be careful about saying things that you're going to do that you don't know whether it's God's direction to do yet because your words will deceive your heart. I got led into that one time. And it's because of the words that I spoke that my spirit led me into that thing. My words deceive my heart. Your words can deceive your heart and override the spirit of God, see? Now, the human spirit was designed of God to enlighten you. But if you feed it the wrong words, that's why it's so important that we say what God said. Sometimes people say, well, now, Brother Caps, I just don't believe in this confessing the Scriptures and trying to make God do something. I'm not trying to make God do anything. I'm just saying what God said about me. Somebody said, yeah, but you're just trying to act like God, saying what God says. Well, now, isn't that amazing? Here I am acting like God would act in a situation, getting criticized, and then there's somebody out there that's saying what the devil said. Who are they acting like? If you're quoting the devil, you're acting like the devil. If you're quoting God, you're acting like God. Huh? Had you rather act like God or the devil? Well, see, the spirit of man can reveal some things to you. He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself to judge to no man. No man can judge what's in your spirit. Oh, they may condemn you for your action, but they don't know what was in your spirit. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. How do we have the mind of Christ? The Spirit of God. The natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God, but the spirit man does. God has given us of his Spirit that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Train your human spirit to hear the voice of the Spirit of God. And let your spirit lead you. If you're led by the spirit, then you won't go wrong. Can you see that? Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God forevermore. But I don't know whether I helped you or not, but I talked myself happy about this. Glory be to God.